Can you think of a time when you were desperate for a specific piece of information or had some news you were anxious about hearing? Oh, uh, when Trump became president, I remember that. I was like, oh, the day before, um, I was so anxious and I was like, I, like, I don't think this is actually going to happen, but you never know. And then like it happened and then... Did you wake up? No, I didn't. I was so scared. I was like, if I keep, oh my gosh, it was so bad. I was like, if I keep like wrestling and like thinking about this, I'm never going to be able to like go to bed or anything. So yeah, I couldn't. I could not. Previously in Greater Boston. Welcome home. Mr. Stamatis. Can I just go to jail now? Take him away, boys. You want to join the commute? Well, I'm not sure I'm ready to commit to that yet. Maybe I can find other people to help through the troops. Guide others from afar, like Leon guided me. If you forget your place again, you might end up without one. Just like so many of my enemies will. Okay, you want it in Rock. character voice or anything? All right. Malden. Red Dorchester. Somerville. Right. Bronx. Yeah, this? Somerville. Uh, I've never been on this one in my life. I live in Milton, Massachusetts. Rosendale. East Boston. Dorchester. South Boston. This is... Medford, Massachusetts. Red Line. Dorchester. This is... This is... This is... Greater Boston. This Week in Greater Boston, Episode 33. By Hook or by Crook. We are. We are. We are. Looking for solutions. Closer than you think. Only a click away. We, we are. are. Growing in numbers. Changing the future. Fueling your future. We, we are, are directly en route. Inside your home. At your doorstep. We, we are. are. We are. We are. Inside your brain. Inside your heart. Inside your soul. We are. We are. We are. We are. Legion. 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 A Legion headquarters coming soon to Redline. All positions applying now. So, there I was, back in Wonderland. At first, I believed this could be beneficial. Mr. Paletti had delivered me back to Oliver, my main adversary. If I was directly reconnected to him, it would be easier to listen to his scheming which would make it easier to mount countermeasures to thwart his plans. But then, things started to become... complicated. Don't touch it! Direct physical contact could have adverse effects. You're telling me this silly little ball has... powers? Difficult to believe, I'm sure, but it's true. This particular crystal ball contains the spirit of a would-be employee of Third Sight Media, a Mr. Leon Stamatis, whom I convinced to aid my efforts in turning our redline predictions into facts, in addition to helping secure the city for us, by way of supernatural spying. Oh, you blackmailed a ghost. Something to that effect. But one must be careful with all possessed objects, as direct contact could result in a mixture of thoughts and feelings between the natural world and the metaphysical one. Uh, what kind of mixture exactly? Perhaps we should find out. Mr. Poletti, hold out your hands, please. Never! Oh, tisk tisk. The powerless give muted commands. Cheese robots, his hands. Now. No! No, not again! Again? <laughs> of course. You've had contact already, which is why you were able to find us. Mr. Stamatis is able to see far and wide. My question is, how did you manage to find this ball in the first place? I'll tell you, I promise. It's, it's quite simple, really. You see... The truth is, I reached very far, as far as I could, straight into your rectum, and I pulled it out. <laughs> Give him the ball. Cheese robots, place the ball into his hands and secure it there. No, 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 wait, I... So the question was, now where to go? Isabel might be able to help, but how much? What is this? Look at his face. It's like he... 
it's like he's someplace else completely. Is he channeling someone's thoughts? Quite possibly. My guess is it's Mr. Stamatis himself. He needed to be there for her, commiserate her loss, not demand she do something for a person she didn't know, a person Isaiah barely knew. Hmm. Yes, an important note. You didn't come here alone, did you, Mr. Paletti? And whomever had accompanied you will soon be back with help. Now that we've secured Redline, it's time for us to set up shop there, so to speak. An opportune time to circle the wagons, address our new mayor, and begin implementing our plans for Redline. This ball. I want to know its full market potential. I, uh... I'm not sure if... Vespin, your priority should be the transit automation. But when you're not working on that, we want you... On the ball. If we could harness that power, the power to read thoughts and minds of our customers, of our competition... Uh, Yes, but... Unlock its secrets. And we'll handsomely compensate you for your hard work. I really think that we should... Both of you. Very well. We expect regularly submitted progress reports. We'll be in touch. Gentlemen... The sky comes for us all eventually. There's no point in trying to grow wings. Hmm. It terrifies me that sometimes I begin to understand you. And yet? This location is compromised. We have secured Redline. The choice to leave is obvious. Grave voices echo vertically down through the dirt. Whatever it is between the two of you, you need to mend it. You both have what you want now. She has what you want, not what she wants. Then educate me. What is it she wants? Still water, which refuses to reflect the stubbornly dull stars on a clear night. Okay, now that one got away from me. Emily wants a moment in time to last forever, and no matter what you offer her, what you give her, you can't bring that moment back. And neither can I. There's a space close to Kendall MIT that would be ideal for a lab. I could refashion it, but I need you to give me time to do my work, which means you'll occasionally need to run interference. Deal. From a deck full of jokers and instructions for Pinochle. And so, Oliver and Ethan packed up the equipment and took several trips to their new lab near the Kendall MIT stop. And days later, once they were finally done settling into their new headquarters, Oliver received... A distressing phone call. Ah, Philip. Allow me to inform you that... What? You're where? Phil, great to meet you. I like to get to know the fellas who are dating my friends. Do you know why? I like to weed out the creeps. You know, the type of guy who will stage an attack that temporarily blinds my friend in one eye solely so he can gain her trust to manipulate and spy on her so he can help commit terrorism and rig a city election. The usual types of creeps. Oh, it's a typical police mentality. They've got no sense of humor. They arrested me. We did. Do you know all the crimes we can connect you to? Uh, Give it up, Gemma. He's too smart for us. He's not going to talk. He's a mastermind. Besides, what we can get out of his uncle will be much more valuable. Good point. And I get the feeling old Uncle Ollie will be far more willing to sell Phil the pill up the river. I say we crack that nut instead of wasting our time here in the mud. (laughs) Now listen, Louisa. You may be a wonderful police officer, but believe me, you can sell fake patents to your mother. I'm not a police officer. I'm a private investigator. And we get it. You're a Star Trek character. Congratulations, you're still in jail. Or excuse me, the brig. I'm telling you, he looks so goddamn familiar and I don't know why. You're sure you never showed me a picture? Not that I remember. Do you have any hanging up at your house? We dated for like a couple of months. We're not the goddamn Waltons. Well, I don't know. It's freaking me out. Let's talk to the chessboard bozo. Think he knows anything? Not sure. But the more we know, the more leverage we have. Oh, finally! I've been sitting here for eternity! 
Hey, well, why don't you tell me what I'm doing rotten in this shell? I mean, what, fellas get locked up for playing a little chess now? I barely even played. I mostly just waited for someone to play, that's all. I'm just waiting for someone to play and deliver a message. I mean, heck, I don't even know how to play. I was just there on a job. Odd jobs keep the bread buttered. That's what my old man used to tell me. He was a handyman. He used to do all sorts of work in his spare time. And me? Well, I'm retired now, but I used to own a few print and copy shops. I, I say used to, but I still own them. I just don't do much work there anymore. Oh, I mean, I stop in from time to time. She had a run in. You like to keep everyone on their toes. I run a tight ship. Uh, I mean, I don't, like, really run it anymore, because, like I said, I am retired. Uh, but the ship is mine, and, well, um, they know I run a good enough ship that they like to run it. Uh-huh, tight. Uh, and I used to run a tight enough ship that the ship is still tight. So when I swing by and I take a look at how tight the ship is, it turns out it's still pretty tight. Shut up! The guy who hired you, what can you tell us about him? And try and keep your answers limited to half an epic tome rather than the entire volume. Uh, his name is Phil. Why did you take this job? Oh, well, work is work, you know. And it was harmless, wasn't it? Oh, oh no. Was, was I passing on secrets? Oh, I'm not involved in, in, like, any spy stuff, am I? Oh, was it one of those oppressive countries using me? Oh, because if it was, I'm just a patsy. I mean, I'm just a patsy either way. You know... That word doesn't sound so good for a word that's supposed to describe someone that's innocent. Patsy. Blech. Now, yeah, has a bad sound to it, don't you think? Sure does. And how did he know to contact you in the first place? I said someone I've worked with in the past recommended me. <laughs> that could be anyone, because, you know, they all know I'm solid. Yep, that's me, solid and dependable. Tight ship. Yeah, there's Walter from the papers, there's Chicken, the line cook, there's Donnie down the block. Now, I make deliveries to the pound for him sometimes. Yeah, there's Juanita who pays me to get her groceries. Of course, that's not really a job. She tries to give me gas money, but I don't take it. Yeah, uh, speaking of groceries, there's the truck guy, yeah, putting the food in the tube. Uh, there's Libby from the dump, there's Javier from the car did, lot. Did you say tube? Yes, put it together. Yeah, yeah, the guy without a truck. He really likes Bertha. That's the name of my truck, although he don't like that it's called Bertha. Uh, but he likes her just the same. He likes her too much, in fact. And not that I blame him, because she's a Ford Super Duty. Uh, yeah, but I also got a Ford Taurus, and... The tube. Uh, Tell her about the tube. Uh, well, he, he puts food in it. Yes, for Michael. Tuna subs? What? Uh, no. Tuna subs. Is it tuna subs he puts in the tube? Well, I, I never saw what was in there, to be honest. I suppose it, it could be tuna. And sub rolls and whatever else you might need to make a tuna sub. Celery? Yeah, come to think of it. Yeah, there was a celery stock poking out of at least one of the grocery bags. Yeah. No, no, this isn't for the publisher. Where was this tube? At some parking lot a little outside the city. I figured it was a bank. You know, some of those banks have some of those tubes. Third Sight has a tube in the parking lot. It's the publisher. He's still there getting his tuna tubes right on cue. No, it's for Michael. He needs your help. It, it, who hired you for these jobs again? Uh, just some guy that loves trucks. Who hired him? No idea. And someone you work with recommended you to Phil? Far as I understand it. Excuse us a minute. Hey, uh, now how long are you going to leave a fella in? Do you really think he's just hanging out upstairs still? The Newton police checked the place out and came up with nothing. But I never knew where the guy was and I worked there for decades. Is it possible he wasn't in the building? Those tubes with the Klingon notes were all over the city. I don't think the... What are you doing here? I'm... I'm shutting you guys down? Get out of here! I've been told to act as Phil's representative and to ensure nobody speak to him until he's had a chance to talk to his lawyer. Uh-huh. And who asked you to do that? Who do you think? Let me remind you that you're not a lawyer, and you can remind Emily Bedpan that she's not the mayor yet. Okay, okay. Take it easy. Deep breaths. Nika, have you heard anything on your end? There's a meeting later that seems super shady. Other than that, it's been quiet. Emily's been writing something, though, and laughing a lot while doing so. Well, that can't be good. Can you try and get into that meeting? I'll do my best. It would help if you guys would cooperate with me here. And if I could throw them a bone about how much usable information you got from Phil. Whoa, whoa. hold on. This is going way too fast. Gemma? How much can you really trust her? What makes you think she's not going to go to them and spill her guts? I am. That's the whole point. To what end? To the end that they trust me and give me enough information to help put them away. Well, excuse me, but we've been playing this Boris and Natasha game for months now, and all you've given us is Bullwinkle. Come on, that's not true. She's given us records. She's given us information on the robot. It's not enough. None of it. 
Bespin wins, Dickwad Phil might walk, and I'm just supposed to give up? Just trust you after what you did? You know my son. My infant son could have been killed. Right? I'm sorry. I gotta take a walk. She's right. No, come here. It's okay, she's she's upset for a lot of reasons. She was dealing with some things even before the election and after, well, we're all on edge after. Listen to me, I trust you. I know you're trying, okay? Okay, okay. <sighs> Let me fill you in on Mr. Phil. Can you think of a time when you were desperate for a specific piece of information or had news that you were anxious about hearing? Every day of my life. <laughs> um, I'm anxious a lot of the time. Uh, that happens almost every day. I'm, I'm, I'm really nosy, especially when my family is talking about things, like between her and their sisters, I just peek my head in the door and say, oh, hey, what's going on? So that's an everyday thing for me. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to specify, but couple years back there was some legal issues going on in my family and they took about three months to get back with the decision when they finally did I was all but a little ball of anxiety and nervousness it was in our favor it was in our favor so that I would leave the wait but I wish they didn't take so long to finally inform us that they made the decision well get my GED yeah finding out what my grades was going to be that definitely motivated me I was definitely anxious to find out Sometimes I, I fear for my own life. I'm, I'm one of those people that are scared. Like, I, I would try to look up the news of, to see if there's like terrorism in Europe or something before uh, before we travel somewhere or we go to like Japan. I, I'd see like how like how often they have earthquakes. The job I have now, I applied for it when I was still in school. They were like, oh, we'll get back to you in two weeks. Two weeks was going by and I was like, oh my gosh, did I get the job back? Did I not? Yeah, I definitely need information from my colleagues regularly and mm -hmm. don't always get it when I need it. My director and like my boss is a photographer. And one time he was telling stories how he traveled to Kostryka. He took this really, really great photo. I was like, please tell me how you take this photo. He. He just didn't have the time to tell me at the moment. I'm, I'm very self-aware. I guess that um, in a way it, it could be healthy for you because it's good. It's a good thing that you're aware of your surroundings and and know what place is dangerous and what place isn't dangerous. He left a key detail, and I was like, "What? What? What? I want to hear it. I want to hear it." So I I pursued him for like three days, and he finally told me the like the part I wanted to know, and I was like, "Thank you." Isaiah read about his aunt's loss to Emily Bespin on his phone shortly after escaping from Wonderland. He knew she needed him. She needed encouragement. She needed some tea. She needed a hug. He needed to say he was sorry. But he also needed to do something else first. Leaving dipshit behind hadn't been easy, especially since they were so close to the man who had framed Isaiah. And Isaiah had been so close to finally putting his fist in his face. Well, those robots were weird. And frightening enough to take Dipshit's pleas to flee seriously. He swore he would return to rescue Dipshit, but he needed reinforcements. So he set out to find the commune. It took some time. Dipshit hadn't given him the address in the note he'd passed at Shawmut, just vaguely referencing a spot in Brookline, a large building an abandoned school adjacent to a large garden and a modest gallery, across from a speedway and a city bank. After searching the entire day, Isaiah reluctantly retreated to his apartment. The second day went the same way. Isabel called with an invite to a Star Trek convention on the morning of day three. Isaiah considered it. He knew it would make her feel better. But he wanted to give himself one more day to find the commune and see if they could help. Help with what? Don't worry about it, Aunt Izzy. I'll see you tonight. And finally, in the early evening of day three, he found the commune. Completely shuttered, boarded up, 
littered with eviction notices, like post-it notes over a busy desk, or pictures of children on a family fridge. They evicted them all? Already? So the question was, now where? Isabel might be able to help, but how much? He needed to be there for her, commiserate her loss, not demand she do something for a person she didn't know, a person Isaiah barely knew, especially a person named Dipshit. He thought about breaking down the boarded-up door to see if he could find a trace of a commune, but figured it would be a bad look for someone freshly exonerated. So once again he wandered, this time vaguely in the direction of home. He walked until his feet hurt and his soles felt worn to the ground, until a thunderstorm broke out, fierce rain forcing him to hide in an underpass, listening to the rhythmic hum of traffic above him counting the number of angry mass hole horn blasts. He thought about how strange it was to possess such a strong sense of urgency and feel completely directionless at the same time. And then... Ah! Michael, that must mean you're still okay. Wait, is that another one of those tubes? What, are they following me? Isaiah opened the tube and read... 59. 59. Dispersion. Dispersion. Success. Success. The king, the king approaches, approaches his temple. temple. It, it furthers, furthers one, one to cross the great, the great water. water. Perseverance furthers. Perseverance furthers. What? The... Yeah, sure. Why not? 57. 57. The gentle. The gentle. Success, success through what, what is small. Is small. It furthers one to have somewhere it to go. It furthers one to have it somewhere to go. It furthers one to see the great woman. It furthers one to see the great woman. Seriously? Who are you? A friend. It's strange, but I know what this means. I've been making excuses about seeing her because of how I acted last time we were together. I don't think I was wrong exactly not what I was saying, maybe just how I said it. Time to cross the great water, approach my temple, see the great woman, success through what is small. And so Isaiah went straight to Isabel's red line apartment, just as she was getting home from the Star Trek convention, all decked out in full Geordie LaForge. He told her everything, about dipshit, about the commune, about Wonderland, even about the notes in the tube. What do you think they mean? What did it mean to you? To not give up, but to recognize where you went wrong. Go back to it, make amends. Mm -hmm. It furthers one to cross the great waters. It furthers one to have some place to go. Isabel told Isaiah that Phil, the man who had framed him, had been arrested. Then they talked, they laughed, They cried, and together, they came up with a plan. Hi. Charlotte? It's Isabel. I don't know how else to say this, so I'm just going to come right out and say it. Me and Isaiah need your help. I have no idea if my Klingon note worked, but man, did it feel good sending them. So I figure I could do more of the same. Except, not exactly in the same fashion. Uh, Maybe something, I don't know, a a little more... organized. The Klingon tubes were sent all at once in a rush. Too quickly to figure out which tube led to which screen. So I play a little game of trial and error. At night, when people aren't likely to be freaked out by a tube appearing out of nowhere, I fire one off to map out where it ends up on the closed circuit screens. Remarkably... Most of the tubes are picked up and thrown out in the span of 48 hours by garbage men or good Samaritans. Some people open them and are promptly disappointed there's nothing inside. Some people send the tubes back after discovering where they shoot out from, which um, I appreciate honestly. I have a lot of tubes in here, not an infinite supply. Every single person who sends them back gives a delightful, shocked little jump as it shoots out of their hands. It freaks them out but they can't believe it works at the same time. (laughs) I map out my results with masking tape and a felt pen, tube to closed circuit TV screen, and then I wait and watch. 
not a lot happens. Most people just pass by. These locations are odd. The types of places you usually avoid, dark alleys sandwiched between buildings, corners with dumpsters and rats. Some are bus spots, some are underpasses. Ah, speaking of underpasses, there's this kid sitting under one, getting shelter from the rain, cats and dogs. He looks, uh, he looks a little hopeless, a little lost, and, wait, I know him. He's the kid who was here with dipshit. I realize, this is it. This is the moment, this is why I mapped all these tubes out, but I don't know what to say to him. How can I help him if I don't know what's wrong? Thunder. Thunder over thunder. When I was near my lowest, I played the I Ching. I thought it was Leon giving me advice, and in some ways, I don't know, maybe it was. But whatever it was, it gave me hope and direction. Maybe it can do the same for this kid. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll help. It's worth a shot, isn't it? I roll my coins. Write my notes. Fire my tubes. The kid's clearly confused. I write down my explanation of his judgments, but then he's... gone? Uh, maybe it worked. Maybe it freaked him out? I, who knows? Uh, hopefully he's okay. I get a snack, but... Man, there hasn't been a grocery delivery in a while. Nothing to eat but some, uh, celery. Better than nothing, I guess. I don't know. I'm sure there'll be more food coming soon. Hi there. Is she busy? Who am I kidding? Of course she is. Still, I wonder if I- You! Yes, me. I know I'm unannounced, but honestly, I'm a bit surprised she had- Well, that none of you reached out to me. I mean, there's some transitionary work I'd really like to discuss, and- I don't think that's a good idea. Look, I know there's no love lost between our two camps, but there's an entire city at stake, and I simply want to make sure that- Mrs. Bespin is about to entertain some very important- businessman. She simply doesn't have the time at the moment. I'm sorry. Of course she doesn't. Is there anything I can tell you then while I'm waiting for the next stop? No, I, I think we'll just figure it out as we go. Of course you will. I, I will say that I watched you once at Park Street in person. Watched me? I mean, ugh, ugh, sorry. I, I saw what you did. I saw you save that college kid. Lift him over the tracks. I, I was there. I was... Well, I guess you could say that I was inspired. Great. I inspired you to work for Emily. Not exactly, no. Excuse me, it's someone who might actually give a damn. Isabel? Of course. How can I help? What the hell is this has-been doing here, Nika? Leaving. Tell me, Charlotte. Did you participate in Powell's futile little boycott? I didn't, but I wish I had. As do I. Good luck, Nika. I'm sorry, she came unannounced. Uh, she said she wanted to talk to you about the transition. Ugh, as if we need her help. Is everyone ready? Uh, everyone is in the next car. Have they been properly refreshed? I believe so. Well, how does my hair look? Uh, properly refreshed. Don't be smart, Nika. You're addressing your new mayor. Mm, I'm gonna give myself a once-over in the powder room before I join. Check on them and make sure they're comfortable. Of course, Emily. She's going to be furious when she finds out Ethan's not here. Not as furious as I am that you're here. What exactly do you think you're doing, Nika? Continuing our work, no thanks to you. Last I heard, you were getting a severe case of cold feet. Philip told me you were attempting to disarm the- Your moronic the... molasses bomb that scalded a poor woman and hurt a dozen others? Yeah, I was. You're welcome for that. Except, oops, never mind, your nincompoop nephew went through with your plan even after you lied and said it had been called off. That was too far, Oliver, and you know it. 
Regrettable, no doubt. And after it happened, I... Ran away rather than face the consequences? Managed from afar is how I'd put it. Now, if you please, what news do you have of Philip? They got him on fingerprints. For the molasses bomb, for the framing of Isaiah Powell, all of it. He's not talking and didn't give up any information anyway, but they also brought in an accomplice who was talking about being hired for another job possibly related to Phil. Something about food and tubes? What? That's ridiculous. And doesn't sound connected to Philip or myself in the slightest. Well, the RLPD made a connection with your favorite meal and how you prefer to have it delivered. Tuna subs? Ah, yes. Gemma Linzer Coolidge works there now, yes? I don't know any of their names. Well, she was a subordinate of mine once upon a time. But I haven't the foggiest about Philip being involved with food or tubes. And even if he was, what's the crime? It sounds like it's the only lead they have. Lead? To what? To you. They're trying to get information out of him connected to you. I see. Well, we won't give him the chance. Philip's lawyer will have arrived by now. He'll sit quiet until his trial, where I'm sure Emily can use her freshly instituted mayoral powers to ensure he's acquitted of all charges. Ah, Emily, we were just discussing you. I'm hoping you'd be willing to use your influence to ensure Philip's delivery into innocence? Where's Ethan? Ah, yes. Well... Ah, Nika, could you excuse us for a minute? This is a sensitive matter. She can stay, and you can tell me where my husband is. There are some things better discussed privately, between upper management, don't you think? It, it's fine, Emily. The sooner I go, the sooner you'll learn what you need to know. And it's very important that he continue his work. So he's setting up his new lab near the Kendall MIT train station. I need him here, with me. And he needs to complete his work in order for all the moving parts of our plan to successfully come together. Constantly? He needs to constantly work at that blasted lab? I know this isn't ideal, but I promise you he'll come for you soon. Once his work is complete, our plan will be finished. You two can celebrate, but you need also to keep in mind that our mutual benefactors are putting him under a lot of pressure. I demand that he come and see me immediately, and I demand that you relay that information to him. Emily, I recognize someone who is so caught up in their work that they neglect their family obligations. And I recognize the damage that that can cause. Let me propose this. We needed to leave Wonderland because we had an intruder. A former colleague of mine, a Mr. Paletti. He was spying on us, undoubtedly to aid our enemies. And now he's currently with Ethan. So what I propose Ethan is... Ethan isn't some prison guard. No, no, of course not. And if you'll let me finish... I'll go relieve Ethan of his current obligations and send him to you before the night is over. As long as we're clear regarding our plans for Philip, yes? That depends, doesn't it? The clock is ticking, and my sweet little Debbie Zebra Cake Boo Boo Bear Ethan is nowhere in sight. Mm. One last thing. Be wary of trusting Nika. She may seem loyal, but... Shit. Hello? Hey, it's Louisa. Just checking if you've heard anything. I gotta be fast and quiet. Oliver was holed up at Wonderland with Bespin's husband. They had a lab there, we're, but... We're there, following up on another lead we got from the Powells. It's all cleared out. Because they knew the location was compromised, but Ethan's setting up a new shop near Kendall, and he has a prisoner. Let me guess. Dipshit Paletti? Bingo. And there's something else, but... Have a wonderful afternoon, Mr. West. I'm watching you, Nika Stamatis. We all are. Citizens of Redline, in a matter of hours, I'll officially become your new mayor, and I thank you for being sensible enough to place your trust in me. As you know, I promised a new Redline, one filled with order and laws which are actually enforced. 
Living here, you should have certain expectations. You should come home and find your husband waiting for you, or your wife, I suppose, not some stranger, not some dirty rando trying to get to their dirty rando job. Some people disagreed with us, but we showed them, didn't we? Yes, those people disagreed with us so much that they resorted to terrorist tactics to try and send us a message, locking up doors and driving red line into chaos. But we didn't listen. We put our faith in democracy, and democracy has showed them all. And now, we are going to show them something else. We are going to show them the door. My first duty as mayor will be to pass the following proclamation. Anyone who participated in the Red Line boycott is in violation of the Red Line Rail Home contract. Anyone who followed Isabel Powell and resorted to economic terrorism and locked people out of their community rail homes are nothing but law-breaking criminals. This contract violation will not be tolerated. The offending parties have 15 days to find new residences. They are all being evicted. No exceptions, no excuses. Oh, no. I'm sure you're as excited about these plans as I am. No more criminals, no more bad guys, no more pathetic parasites clinging to our success. We are putting law-abiding Redline citizens first. Welcome to your new Redline. Greater Boston is written and produced by Alexander Danner and Jeff Pandreason with recording and technical assistance from Mark Harmon. Hey, do you dig our show? Great! Please consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or one of the other several podcast apps you might use. Or, you know, write it in sand. Write it in a paper airplane and shoot it at the moon. Write it down on paper, stuff it in a bottle, and throw it in the ocean. Is that considered pollution? If it is, don't do that unless it's a really great review. Huge thank you to Patreon supporters Bridge and Rasmus. This episode featured Braden Lamb as Leon Stamatis, Mike Linden as Oliver West and Marlow, Jordan Higgs as Ethan Bespin, Rick Seif as manager, sales, and lawyer, James Capobianco as Dipshit Paletti, Lydia Anderson as Jenna Lindsay Coolidge, Michael Melia as Philip West, Julia Prop as Luisa Alvarez, Kelly McCabe as Nika Stamatis, Mario De Rosa Jr. as Isaiah Powell, Jessica Washington as Isabel Powell, James Oliva as Michael Tate, Summer Unson as Charlotte Windsor Coolidge, and Sam Musher as Emily Bespin. Also featuring David Reinstrom as the Legion announcer, and Erie Alexander, Cole Burkhart, Fox Cooper, Tina Daniels, Christopher Dole, Todd Faulkner, Jack Peavy House, Alma Rhoda Jill, Zane Sexton, and Alex Welch as Legion. So many wonderful friends with wonderful audio dramas included here, like Forest Guide, Arden, Uncanny County, Jim Robbie and the Wanderers, Radio Drama Revival, and more. <sighs> Isn't audio fiction the best? Charlie on the MTA by Emily Peterson and Dirk Teedy. Blackberry Rag, Farewell the Nig, and Tam Lynn Set by Adrian Howard, Emily Peterson, and Dirk Teedy. Drums by Jim Johansson. Transcripts available at greaterbostonshow.com. So there I was, back in Wonder... Oh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, what am I doing back here? Ah, there I was, right back in Wonderland, right see? Right back in your phone. Still dipshit plenty. Still dipshit after one. Oh. <laughs> still dipshit. <laughs> I was cracking up thinking about the squirrel that whole time. <laughs> I'm so sorry.